myself Dr. Pallavi Railavhale and I am going to teach you BP405T Pharmacognosy and we are going to discuss the unit 4 and topic for today is role of pharmacognosy in Ayurveda. In the last class we have discussed the role of pharmacognosy in allopathic system of medicine. So what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda literally means Ayu, it is made up of two words Ayu and Veda. Ayu means life while Veda means knowledge. Okay. So, together the knowledge of life is the literal meaning of Ayurveda and its mention is there in our text, traditional text like Athur, Atharva Veda and Yajur Veda. If you look at those texts, the mention of Ayurveda is there that is around 5000 years ago. So, mention of Ayurveda has been seen in our Vedas since 5000 years. So, this is one of the oldest system of medicine I can say and till date it, uh, it has been sustaining itself in the terms of its different mes, uh, medicines and treatment uh, systems because of which it becomes one of the most important type of traditional system of medicine which needs to be studied in detail. And being a pharmacist, because many of the people with when they have to take long term medicines, they start drifting towards the traditional systems because it is a type of you can say a concept has been there. People have a mindset that the Ayurvedic medicines do not have side effects though it is not true. However, because the Ayurvedic formulations, they are mixture of many ingredients, the side effects reduce. Okay. So, because of which people start taking Ayurvedic medicine if they are not getting any kind of help from the allopathic system of medicine. Now, if we go at the basic principle of Ayurveda, we will discuss that in brief and then we will move to the role of pharmacognosy in Ayurveda. So, Ayurveda says that the entire universe that is the macrocosm as well as the individual or the body that is the microcosm both are made up of five things which are known as the pancha tattvas that is the pancha bhutas. Okay. So, what are these? They are basically the a, the basically it is consisting of the akasham okay akash or the sky you have the fire okay that is the basically uh, uh, fire is bringing about a lot of uh, i can say heat along with it we have jal or the water okay then we have the earth that is the soil the earth the hard part of our whole entire universe that is earth and finally, we have the space or the uh, vacuum which is there, it is also known as the ether. Okay. So, these five things sky, fire, water, earth and ether together form the pancha tattvas and they are present in the universe as well as, as the in the individuals. Now, we have studies in anatomy and physiology regarding the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. Okay. We know that the sympathetic system increases the blood pressure, parasympathetic system decreases the blood pressure. So, in short it is maintaining the blood pressure. So, different different things like heart rate, digestive system all this is getting maintained by both the systems. Now, here this concept of sympathetic and parasympathetic in Ayurveda is changed to three parts that is it has the vata, pitta and kapha as the three you can say uh, areas in the bodies and they have a specific property. Vata has a different property, pitta has a different property and kapha has a different property and its presence in the body is also varied. Okay. Now, this three together they are known as the three doshas or the humors. And these three doshas, they are made up of the pancha tattvas only. Okay. So, vata it is made up of air and ether, pitta is made up of fire and water and kapha is made up of water and earth. In brief, if I say vata generally is present in the joints, it is present in the inter, uh, visceral organs. Okay. So, in the, in the basically in the abdomen. 
so it is present in those areas where air spaces are there okay now when air spaces are there it is signifying one panchatattva that is air and second panchatattva that is ether like for the movement of our body our bones have to move and for that the joints have to move okay so there are spaces between between our bone joints which are basically taken care by the vata then if we talk about pitta pitta is composed of two uh, three uh, two panchatattvas that is fire and water so fire it means basically fire also known as agni it means basically wherever the heat is getting produced so wherever the enzymes are acting or the digestion is taking place okay in our cells also in our cells we have various metabolic uh, metabolic reactions taking place in our stomach we have the digestion taking place okay then uh, there are various enzymes which are acting in our body so in those areas we have the presence of the pitta it is similar to a acid okay it's like an acid then the third is kapha now kapha generally it is found in the lungs or wherever the mucus secretions are there okay so it is mixture of two things water and earth now kapha has a property of coldness okay and water and earth both signify signify cool nature while pitta it signifies hotness it has a very hot nature while vata signifies a light nature it is generally uh, you can say dry as well as very light weighted that is signified by vata so these vata pitta and kapha they stay together in the body in a, i would uh, like to show it this way that we have vata pitta and kapha and if a person he is having the balance of this vata pitta and kapha we will say that he is in a best health okay he is a healthy person because all these three doshas are existing in a balanced way when there is a disbalance means if a normal person is he is he is facing from a lot of acidity in the stomach so it means what has happened pitta has increased so what will be the treatment for that we have to either increase the kapha or the vata so that this pitta is getting balanced and that is how we are giving substances of opposite property to the patient so that it is nullifying the effect and bringing back the balance of vata pitta and kapha so that is the basic principle of treatment in ayurveda where the drugs are given in such a way because the properties of drugs are also identified the property of diseases are identified and it is just like okay pitta is increasing we have to give a drug which decreases pitta and we have to choose that drug and give to the patient so that is a simple philosophy of ayurveda now if we move further about the ayurveda they say that there are different dhatus which are known as the sapt dhatus or substances in our body they are basically if i start with uh, this is the plasma okay plasma it is also known as the rasa in some text it is said that the substances which we eat they are the rasa however the plasma which we uh, have in our blood that is also known as the rasa then we have blood which is known as the rakta then we have muscles which are known as the mamsa then we have the adipose tissue or the fats which is known as the meda or the medas then we have the bones which are known as the asthi majja are basically the bone marrow and shukra are basically the reproductive substances which are produced in our body so we have this sapt dhatus which are present in our body and here you can see that there it is in this this brain there is it is written something it is nothing but prana so the life in our body is known as the prana and the property of our body it is known as the prakriti okay so whatever is the prakriti of our body depending upon that prakriti this prakriti comes from the sapt dhatus and the 
three doshas. Like if you imagine a manufacturing unit, you, if you imagine uh, industry where manufacturing is taking place. So, we have all the machinery set up. So, what is the machinery? These saptadhatu, these are the machineries. Okay. And then we have the, we need water, what all things to run the machinery? We need electricity, we need water, we need uh, some kind of, you can say, uh, uh, inputs or the raw materials. Okay. So, that is the three dosha. This is the electricity or the thing which is going to run the machinery. So, this is how saptadhatus and three dosha work in a, uh, you can say, work together and they help in the living of the prana maintaining the nature or prakriti of the uh, person and whatever energy which is pro produced by the person in the form of energy whatever like we are able to talk we are able to walk we are able to do things why because we have the energy we are eating food and that food is getting converted in the form of energy that is known as prasada in ayurveda now, we are eating food for having energy and working, okay. We have all the things going on in a healthy pattern. But humans other than this, whatever raw material is taking in, whatever food we are taking in, it gets excreted also, okay. So, whatever material is excreted, they are known as the malas in Ayurveda. They are generally mutra, shakrit and svedana. That is the excretion to the urinary route through the fecal material as well as through the perspiration. Now, we go to the diagnosis in Ayurveda. So, the method of diagnosis in Ayurveda is known as Ashtisthan Parikshan and it mainly has, it also known as 8 point diagnosis where we perform the Nadi Parikshan that is the nubs or the pulse is checked, the Mutra Parikshan where the urine is examined. We do the vata or the sparsha pariksha where we touch the person and feel that whether there is any kind of pain or the temperature is high. So, by touching and sensing the pain that is known as the vata pariksha. Pitta pariksha that is understanding the digestive. If the person is having lot of acidity whether he is able to digest the food like doctors ask that uh, whether you feel hungry or not. Okay, Sometimes we do not feel hungry means there is some problem with the digestive system. So, ascertaining what is the pitta of the person then kapha, kapha means whether the person is having any kind of mucus secretions, uh, what are the type of the mucus secretions that is asked in kapha. Then malapariksan means the stool examination understanding whether he is suffering from any kind of diarrhea or constipation or something like that. Then jivva parikshan the tongue examination doctors normally check our tongue ok. So, this is the jivva parikshan and then the shabda parikshan that is the examination of the bodily sounds like stethoscope which is used to understand the heart rate. It is a modern medicine type of uh, uh, you can say instrument which tells us whether our heart rate is uh, heart is working properly or not. Also, you must have heard about ultrasound in modern medicine. What is it? It is also understanding the sounds produced in the body. So, this concept of ultrasound is not new. It is there in Ayurveda also in the form of Shabda Parikshan that whether our body is making any kind of sound or problems, then that is as certain as one of the diagnostic points. So, this is the Ashtasthan Parikshan. Then we come to the treatment. Treatment in Ayurveda is divided into three parts. One is the Shodhana, second is the Shamana and third is the Rasayana. Shodhana also means cleansing, cleansing matlab purification, when a person is getting purified, it is, the toxins in the body are getting removed. And these toxins are not just the physical toxins or the chemical toxins. They are emotional. They are uh, they can they can be eliminated through meditation, through yoga, or through counseling. Okay, so we have to do the cleansing of the person. So generally, uh, if I talk about physical, then we give enema to the person, or we uh, give certain type of oil massages to remove the impurities present in the person and make him pure. Second is the shamana also known as the palliative treatment. It reduces the intensity of a disease and balances the disordered doshas. So, this is basically I would say the symptomatic treatment. If a person is suffering from any kind of headache, 
we are just treating the headache here or if he is suffering from stomach ache we are treating the stomach ache so that is the shamana treatment third is the rasayana treatment also known as the rejuvenation therapy means that here the person see in ayurveda having not uh, uh, having uh, no disease is not a good health a person has to be completely healthy okay a person has to be uh, completely healthy it is not required okay i don't have any pain it means i am healthy okay the question is whether i am able to leave, uh, sleep properly whether i am able to digest my food properly whether i am active enough whether i take rest enough okay all these things are questioned and if you feel that yes all these are good it means you are a healthy individual which is very very rare in these times okay so here rasayana therapy is saying okay the person we have first removed all the bad things from the person we have treated his ailment now we have to bring him back to a best health and that is through giving rejuvenation therapy where he performs meditation yoga along with for certain drugs for for example ashwagandha which is a very good uh, rejuvenator drug ashwagandha giloe okay such drugs are very good rejuvenators now the uh, now we come to the pharmacist point of view and now we are discussing like a pharmacist in ayurveda so we know that how the disease is diagnosed in ayurveda how it is treated but while treating what are the things which have to be kept in mind so first thing that a doctor in ayurveda he always considered a considers a person as an individual it's not like allopathic medicine okay we have to give a antiviral drug and we know and acyclovir is a antiviral drug we will give that drug it's not like that here the person has to be analyzed his uh, nature has to be analyzed which kind of tridosha is there in his body and as per that individualistic treatment is done okay now when the treatment is done we have the treatment either by meditation enema etc those things are there that is panchakarma and all but after that we have to give certain drugs to them and these drugs also carry certain properties in terms of the tridosha that is vata pitta and kapha why because they are also the part of the universe and they are also made up of the panchatatva so they will also have the tridosha and based on five points that is first of all rasa the taste how is the taste of the drug what are the physico chemical properties of the drug what is the potency or the viri of the drug what is vipaka means post digestive effect of the drug and what is prabhava that is the pharmacological effect of the drug so these are the five points based on which all the ayurvedic medicines are analyzed and based on that a ayurvedic practitioner knows okay this is the guna rasa virya and vipaka prabhaka prabhava of our drug so this drug can be given to a patient for its treatment for example if i take a uh, take uh, any sweet drug okay sweet to drink for example muleti or licorice now muleti has a taste which is sweet and sweet taste is generally related to the kapha property if we uh, give anything sweet to a person then it will have a kapha property okay so we have to give it in times when a person is suffering from any kind of digestive ailments you can give him muleti then if we talk about guna guna means whether it is a very bulky drug or it is a heavyweight drug whether it is very uh, having if we talk about the entire drug whether it is very thorny in nature or whether it is needle shaped crystals are there or whether it is very smooth to touch based on that the based on these physical uh, properties they are segregated into the panchatatvas and based on that they are selected potency means like if it is having a uh, kind of ushna potency or a sheath potency ushna potency means hot potency hot is related to pitta sheath is related to kapha so what kind of potency does the drug have depending upon that the drug is given to the patient 
vipaka means after the digestion means like if you are taking a drug and if after digestion it is getting broken down to either an amino acid or a fatty substance or into a sugar based on that again the uh, it is determined that whether it belongs to kapha pitta or vata category and the last one that is prabhava that is individualistic for every drug we cannot determine it because they are uh, studied from the traditional text yes yes it is uh, it is having a uh, pitta property or a kapha property so based on those five things we decide a particular drug can be given for a particular ailment or not now further if we go at the role of pharmacognosy in ayurveda basically ayurveda has different type of dosage forms which are uh, classified based on its consistency for example whether it is a solid dosage form semi solid dosage form liquid dosage form or powder dosage form solid dosage forms examples are vatika guttika or gugulu they are like small tablets circular tablets they they have their specific names semi solid for example kalka avleha or leha i will give the example of chavan prash which is an avleha then liquid dosage forms like asav arishta swarasa or tela like ashoka arishta kumari uh, asava these are the drugs which are formulated in the liquid dosage forms and then we have the churnas and bhasmas like the kayam churna okay like we have the uh, mukta shatik bhasma we have different different bhasmas that are the incinerated powders or the burnt powders or we have churnas that is mixture of herbs coming together so here you can see that there are so many dosage forms which are prepared in ayurveda and because there are various dosage forms obviously a role of a pharmacist comes in where we have to study the raw materials we have to formulate the formulations after that we have to do the quality control we have to see the regulatory affair part of these drugs and how it is reaching the market okay so and as well as dispensing to the patients so all this is a role of a pharmacognosist which is uh, which i would say it becomes important for any person that why Uh, pharmacognosy is important in ayurveda it is important because there are so many varied formulations which are being sold and a pharmacist is there to help the uh, patients for that that is why we are studying this so here further how do we standardize this formulations that comes a, a big becomes a big question because all the ayurvedic herbs they have plants or animal substances in them so here first of all when the drug comes or the raw material comes to a manufacturer the plants are identified by the botanist or the taxonomist to identify it from the related species then after identification it is seen that whether it is if it is any kind of adulterant or a substituent that is understood that whether it is harmful or harmless in nature then we perform the quantitative microscopy macroscopy other microscopic characters are studied and we determine that whether the drug is of pure quality or not we also generate the analytical data for example the ash value solubility profiles extractive values loss on drying acid value saponification value and foreign matter all these things are done we have already studied these things in unit 1 of our bp405 we do perform the chemical identity test like this is the phytochemical screening by various tests like we uh, study what are the chemical constants present whether it is alkaloid glycoside saponins or tannins we do the instrumental analysis like we uh, uh, study using chromatography or spectroscopic techniques then we use the pesticides or the herbicide residues we determine how many pesticides or residues are present in this plant because it is coming from natural origin and today there is lot of pesticide in the soil then absence of mycotoxins or aflatoxins we have to perform the microbial testing and check that whether is there is any kind of microbial contamination or aflatoxin or mycotoxin present in our drug we also have to study the efficacy as well as toxicity of these formulations for generating evidence based data 
then if we have uh, this is how we uh, will uh, ascertain the quality of the raw material. Now, once this raw material has converted to a formulation, we have to do various testing. So, what are those testings? In case it is a liquid formulation, then we will do the solvent blend composition, ratio of crude drug to solvent uh, uh, ratio that is studied temperature of the substance studies, length of time of extraction has to be determined, method of con uh, collection of the extract has to be determined, method of concentration of the extract has to be determined, light sensitivity while processing has to be determined, storage conditions and precautions during the processing has to be determined. So, we should have the proper procedure which is optimized for extraction of this Ayurvedic formulations. Then if we have solid formulations, we have to do the particle size distribution, blending order and time of blending, granulating, drying temperature, moisture content, tablet hardness, tablet characters, tablet weight and thickness, spray control or uh, 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 sp uh, uh, spray rate of the film coating, all these things have to be determined, which a pharmacist can only do, it cannot be done for by a Ayurvedic practitioner. Then if it is semi-solid formulations, again we have to have the solvent blend composition, how the various uh, conditions were determined, what was the method of concentration, what was the uh, blend homogeneity, what was the viscosity or the rheological character, sensitivity to the light, all those is determined. And finally, the finished pro product standardization based on the color, odor, physical characteristics, uh, chemical characteristics, biological characteristics, microbiological parameters, stability testing and storage conditions. So, all these are determined using various analytical techniques. So, with this we come to an end to uh, the uh, main role of pharmacognosy in Ayurveda. So, we understood the basic concept of Ayurveda, what are the different formulations of Ayurveda and how a pharmacist or a pharmacognosist can help in determining the quality as well as manufacturing of this Ayurvedic formulations. Thank you very much.